So why should you manage your mood and master your mood? As I said, I went through a very, very um, bad depression, a depressive illness that went through the worst, worst episode that my psychiatrist had ever managed. And he always used to ask me to rate my mood every time I saw him. 0 to 10. 0 is where you're dying, 10 is where you're thriving physically, mentally, spiritually. So he'd ask me this every time. And so one day I asked him, why do you ask me that? And he said, well, for one thing, it helps me to understand you know, where you are currently. But I also believe that one day you should be able to learn how to manage your mood and maybe even to master it. And to be honest, I was a bit pissed off. I said, haven't I got a clinical illness? <laughs> and he said, yeah, you do. You, you know, you, you, you're chronically depressed and you've had five episodes of depression before. But I believe that you and everyone else should be able to learn what to do to manage their mood. So in legacy, well not legacy, but in, uh, inspired by Dr. Fisher, we produced the Moodometer. <laughs> so when we're in the red zone, we're anxious, we're depressed, we're ashamed. Very unproductive, we think black and white. And for me, part of coming out of that was resolving. I had good medical care, but I tried 23 different medications. I had 20 lots of shock therapy. It didn't happen overnight, you know. Like it, um, but for me, it was actually beginning to walk in nature that made a real difference to me. Walking in nature, reconnecting with friends and family I'd become isolated from. That made a big difference. And I gradually moved up the curve a little bit and got to the amber zone, you know, where you worried or defensive or irritated. And for those of you that have experienced mental illness or tried to help someone, you know it's not a straight line. You know, people do this and fall backwards, go forwards. But I'll just use this as an illustration. We can actually move up. And then ultimately, you know, when we're thriving in the green zone, when we're more optimistic, more resourceful, more positive, and the evidence of this is pretty overwhelming from an organisation's perspective. People that are in the green zone, and this is a study by Harvard Business Review, are 31% more productive, they sell 37% more, they're 300% more creative, and there's twice the level of trust. Like, this is all pretty relevant, isn't it, for the VUCA economy that we described. All incredibly pertinent and relevant. When people in the red zone, it's massively expensive. The average cost of a mental stress claim by Comcare, who provide the um, rehab services to Commonwealth departments and large employers, the average cost is $350,000. And other employers will tell you different numbers as well. They're all big. They're all really big and expensive. And that's just the, the smaller end. Now, for me, being in the green zone now, being 10 out of 10 for me, we'll be singing live on stage with Bruce Springsteen. You know, born to run, go the boss. I love the boss because he's a fellow depressive, um, but he's also had an extraordinary life and made an extraordinary contribution. And being in the red zone for me is watching three episodes back to back of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> I'd rather poke needles in my eyes. <laughs> but I think the relevance here is that um, it is much better in the green zone. I've had the red zone, I've had the green zone. The green zone is much better. Now, that's not to mean that we don't slip into the orange or the red zone. But it's, it's knowing that our mood isn't permanent. It's knowing that we can do things that make a difference. <laughs> <laughs>